Your views and thoughts are formidable. <laughs> views and thoughts forms the ideology your views and thoughts marries our daily living with the resounding progress Views and thoughts says a lot about the people. And hey, I am Ugo Pluto Oba, and this is the forum. Views and thoughts. Insecurity and political instability has been ravaging the Nigerian society and it is so worrisome that people lo lose their lives and properties every day. On today's edition, I'll be having a guest and he is Dr. Madabuchi Ogidi, a senior political scientist and senior lecturer of, at Alvanikoko Federal College of Education Owerri. He is the current head of Department Civil and Social Issues, School of General Studies, same institution. He has written books and journal articles on peace and conflict resolution Political development and governance. On the table of analysis, I will be dealing it with Dr. Ogidi on views and thoughts. Don't go nowhere, we'll be right back. Okay, you're still on to the show. Views and thoughts happening on Orient TV 59 and Star Times 113. And don't forget, you can also see this program on YouTube. Search Google Pluto Uba Emo World. Uh, to get our previous edition and also the current one you're seeing right now in case you don't get it on tv okay like we said before uh, we are going to be talking about insecurity and the way forward and uh, as i took before uh, that we're having a uh, dr madu madabuchi ogidi who is a senior a political scientist and um, senior lecturer at alvan eco federal college of education Oweri. Okay, he is the current head of Department Civil and Social Issues, School of General Studies, at the Ikuku Federal College of Education. He has written books and, and journal articles on peace and conflict resolution, political development and governance. What a rich um, profile as it stands right now. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's make welcome Dr. Madabuchi Ogudiu. Welcome to the show. Mm, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let, let, let me start from this uh, point. Okay, what's your general view about... Um, uh, about Nigeria as a nation. Let's start from that light. What's the general view and thoughts about Nigeria as a nation? <laughs> well, that's uh, Nigeria is um, is my country, is our country, and uh, we can view it outside the the point of view of patriotism. Of course, we expect much more from Nigeria. Um, having gone this far, we have high expectations that by now we should have been in a better situation than where we are today. So, but be that as it may, no nation develops without passing through challenges. So the challenges we are passing through today, others that have developed still pass through it. If you read the history of uh, United States of America, they passed through uh, several periods of hardship and um, turbulence in their history. So it is not peculiar to Nigeria. And I believe that the challenges we have today are still surmountable, in as much as our leaders will have the, the political will to do the right thing. And citizens also will also have the patriotism to support the nation not the government. Government will come and go, but the nation will always be there. So we'll rally around the nation so that no matter the government that is in power today, another one will come tomorrow, but the nation will remain and will remain for us and for our children to come. Okay, okay, still talking about insecurity. 
which happens to be um, the, one of the major challenges we have today. Uh, we've been experiencing um, uh, destruction of lives and properties. It has been like, it's just like a normal way of life today. If, uh, look, when you listen to the news, you just hear people dying and all, all of that, you know. Uh, from your own point of view, do you see it like, do you see the situation like a sort of, would I say an, an anonymous war going on? Because uh, when you talk about war, you talk about when there is absence of peace. And of course, as it stands right now, we, we're experiencing people dying and properties being destroyed. Uh, though it may not be the conventional war, but do you see it like war, a kind of war happening? Well, well we don't know about it. Like maybe a kind of war, you know, its own kind of war. But the the conventional war is not what we have in Nigeria. Nigeria is not at war. Um, it's it's insecurity. The only thing is just that it is um, it, it has gone to the rate that it has seen the security architecture of the nation has been overwhelmed, you know, by the challenges happening all almost uh, in all the uh, parts of the country at the same time. It's not as if it's only the northeast or north or the north, but it's everywhere, and the security. Um, personnel, police and other security personnel can be everywhere at the same time. And that's why it is the way it is. So it is not war per se. It's just that it has become articulated with the, the politics and the, the struggle for survival in Nigeria. That's just the way I see it. It, it. it has political side of it. It has economic side of it. Because the, the most of the insecurity we, we see flow from say, um, political struggle for political power and also the uh, uh, the um, attempt by the youth to use co uh, violence in order to you know in order to make a living in a way because they fall victims of you know being prone to people that will be recruited as food soldiers in perpetrating this in insecurity and also in the aspect of violent crime kidnapping and the rest of it when you don't have you know what to do they can take to some of these um social vices and uh, you know which culminate in insecurity that we are seeing today so it's not war per se but it is we can also uh it, it but it calls for a national emergency too it, we, there's there's need to declare emergency on the security of nigeria because except we see it as that then we might just be playing or beating about the bush because it has gone to the point that you know people can't sleep and rest every day you keep on hearing stories and stories if you think that things will get better you keep on hearing worse ones so i believe that um, we can still get uh, you know get around it and find a solution to the problem okay uh still still uh, let me take it from uh, from your own uh, view do you, do you think do you think in terms of humanity do you think that um uh, let, let me let me let me let me mention the politicians because they are the ones you know uh, coming up with policies and all of that and also executing executing it and all of that in the area of humanity. Do you think um, the politicians are really have really done their best? Because sometimes, for what you just said, you know, people take pick up arms and um, want to resort to violence and all of that just for them to you know pass a, a message that okay. Uh, that they are ag agitating or, 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 or that. And sometimes when you ask them, they tell you that um, when, when they go diplomatically, when they write and you know try to like talk like we're doing right now, that those at the head don't you know don't this they take their words for for granted, and then the only language they understand is violence. Do you see it from that view? Yes, absolutely. There is there are sense in that uh, in that point of view. Because it's like our you, you said whether our leaders have done enough. I, I don't think they have done enough. There are still much more to be done. The bulk of the responsibility lies on leadership. There's no there's no country that has ever developed without um, a political class that has the interest of the nation at heart. A political class that can make sacrifice just for the nation to move forward. But we, it's like we have a crop of politicians who are more interested in you know in power in their own interest 
you know, where at a point where it may they will need to make sacrifice for the generality of the uh, for the continuity of the you know of the health of the nation, they would rather prefer to be selfish. So that's one. And then you talked about um, uh, you talked about people uh, uh, taking up arms. Of course, yes. When people uh, when the political space is not open for dialogue, people will have agitations. And instead of um, it to be addressed based on dialogue, and government might reach agreement with even labor unions currently as we on strike. And uh, there is an opinion that uh, maybe it's because of the strategy that ASU is using. Maybe if ASU was using a, a, was a violent group, maybe the government would have listened to it. So it's like strike is not even a, a very good strategy okay. in, 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 in pushing, down, pushing your, your agitations. Mm -hmm. So but once a group begins to take up arms, maybe they will begin to draw the attention of the government. But that is wrong. It's a, it's a democracy that is built on dialogue and negotiation. So when you have that channel of people expressing themselves, expressing their agitations, of course we are bound we are bound to agree and disagree in the democracy. We are not we can't have all the views put in one in one place, you know, everybody will follow. No. We disagree, but then once we have the platform for organizing ourselves, then the government should be able to respect every agreement it enters with anybody and listen to genuine agitations and addressing them instead of sweeping them under the table and trying to use force to, to suppress every agitation okay mm -hmm. now looking at the, uh, the the equity structure of nigeria talking about uh Ibo, Hausa, Yoruba, do you think uh, do you think is that that structure alone you know and its imbalance is also responsible for uh, uh, um, political instability because from political instability you start having uh, people you know, taking laws into their hands which leads to insecurity. Do you see from that aspect, do you think that one is also uh, responsible as a situation whereby um, where it's okay, uh, this, is the, this is the equity structure, um, that you, 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 you handle this uh, office, you handle this office, you handle this office, and then the day, everything moves to one, uh, one region. Don't you think that also, you know, causes that? I I agree with that. You know, if you look at the security challenge you have in the southeast, you know, every, almost everything is now the, the major group that is being pointed out. Maybe they say IPOB okay. or this or that. Yeah. You know, but then that's not to say that I, I think we the uh, the strategy of IPOB or or these agitations might not be right. The strategy might not be right, okay. but. You can't also take away the the point they have in you know in the argument. The major point they are arguing against is uh, that the Nigeria as it is today is not fair. Okay. It's not fair to the southeast. Of course, up to today we are still not sure that an evil man will be the president okay. of Nigeria. Okay. You know, and uh, so many things are not in favor of the region. And, you know, it's as if that the whole structure is just tweeted against the southeast. Mm -hmm. other, other regions have more than five, five states. You only have five states in the southeast. South has six. Other regions have six. So such equity, if you look at the uh, local government structures, the southeast is the, is, the, is the least you have. And these are the basis for... You know, sharing of revenue of political offices and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a region that is that disadvantage that you expect them to keep quiet. Okay. And when you have such agitations, the the most logical thing to do is to engage in a, in negotiation. 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 Even though you might not do all the things they are asking for, but just the way you talk to somebody, you at least you you give the person a listening ear. Okay. In a democracy. The, the majority will have their, their way. Majority will have their say. Okay. That's the thing. So, not that you also surprise the minority from having their say. Okay. Even when the majority is having their way. Okay. That's where you, you if minority can have their say, they can take clandestine uh, uh, strategy, okay. which can lead to taking up of arms.
you know, and that will lead to insecurity. So I think it also has something to do with the structure, structural imbalance, okay. and the, the uh, you know, the question of equity that okay. has not been addressed in the political history of Nigeria. Okay, picking up from this, what you just said now, from the Igbo, you know, has been released, you know, and um, then there is also this saying that. Um, the front line man for IPOP should be released as well. Of course, there should be it's, it's some kind of resolve. Now, now, looking at federal government and and um, the Igbo people, or let me say IPOP, how do you think that peace can be restored? You know, for, for everything to uh, move on properly. Well, I, I think that um, it can go far uh, from having a political solution to this. Okay. The courts can't, if we drive this case, logically to a judicial conclusion okay the court may not be able to give us you know a lasting solution okay. you can win a war but you have not won the peace okay. you might win a battle that is okay. maybe the, the battle has ended but you have not been able to gain peace so in as much as we you know of course the boy has been released but remember he is he the there are two different cases he, he was he was released in Benin Republic. Oh, Republic, but now the color is in Nigeria, in Nigeria. today, mm. and they are saying that um, you know, he has to face the the, the, the court process. But okay. nobody is even saying that it might be prejudici prejudicial to begin to to assume that now the color is guilty. Okay. So if they also run through the the judicial process, they, they can still be uh, acquit um, acquitted and, uh, and released discharge, and discharged. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not like you know people are now presuming that okay, if the court he might be convicted, it is not like that. Okay. It, it might not. It, it might go either way. But we might we might not allow it to run through all those process. Okay. We can just allow for dialogue and negotiation. Okay. Let people come together and say that okay, if you are agitating for this. Will give you this, will not give you this one, and then you will see that these things will just go down. We are all one family. Okay. It happens in every family. So we come together, sit together, and then we, we discuss a way forward. I'm very interested in that, and that's what we'll be doing on the second part of the show as we round up. But then you work, you're still uh, watching uh, views and thoughts on already 59 Star Times 1 1 channel. I've been discussing with uh, Dr. Madabuchu Ogidi, political scientist and senior uh, lecturer at Alvan. Koku Federal College of Education, Uri. okay, and uh, currently the head of uh, Department Civil and uh, Social Issues uh, School of uh, General Studies. Let's go for this break, and we'll come back. We we'll talk about the solutions and how to resolve it, every constraint regarding insecurity. We'll be right back. Your views and thoughts are formidable. <laughs> views and thoughts forms the ideology your views and thoughts marries our daily living with the resounding progress Views and thoughts says a lot about the people. And hey, I am Ugo Pluto Oba, and this is the forum. Views and thoughts. Okay, the show is still views and thoughts on TV, and um, we've been having. Uh, a serious uh, discourse on the program talking about insecurity and the way forward with Dr. Madabuchi Ogidi, uh, who is a lecturer uh, at Albany Koko Federal College of Education and handling uh, peace and conflict resolution. Okay, let, let's quickly uh, go into uh, the solutions because uh, we believe that, um, like, if there is conflict, there will be a resolution and it will herald peace. Now, insecurity itself. 
insecurity in self. How can we move away from insecurity from your own perspective now? How can we how can how can we get it right? How can we get it right at least to, to make everything that is not going well at least to a bare minimum to, to be right in a way because it's insecurity is every day if you move out you either if you're not kidnapped your your you're robbed. If you're not robbed, you're, you're maimed. Things are just happening every day. It's, it's so crazy. What's your own area of solution as regards insecurity? You know, uh, as I think as I, yesterday and this morning, there was, you know, we, we saw on the news that um, the federal government has approved the, the deployment of more security operatives and uh, more ammunition to the southeast, especially in Imo State, to Imo State, due to the rising spate of insecurity. Okay. Um, well, that, is that a solution? Maybe, maybe just five percent. Five percent. Maybe just five. But that that can't address the problem. You know, addressing the challenge of insecurity has to be holistic. Okay. It can't just continue doing the same thing over and over and expect a different solution. Even if you bring all the all the security architecture we have to a particular state or region. The, the, all you, the highest you can do is to kill off people. Okay. But that won't still solve the problem. First, we must address the problem of unemployment. 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 Pro provide uh, employment opportunities, provide um, infrastructures for youth that can engage themselves you know, in their personal capacity. We are not saying that government should provide employment for everybody. But let's let infrastructure, basic economic infrastructures be provided. People that have entrepreneurial skills mm. can go into their private businesses and make a living. And then secondly, we need responsible leadership. Responsible. Good governance that, you know, will be able to give the people a sense of direction on where we are going to. And then we also need to uh, you know, strengthen, of course, our security architecture. Most of them, most of our, our they complain of using outdated um, 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 weapons, weapons, and the rest of them. Sometimes some of the criminals have more sophisticated weapons than they than they do. It is not good for you know for security. And even though those security men that are being killed, they also have their families too. So we also need to you know equip them, provide social infrastructures, and they be sincere that we need to solve these problems. Because when the politicians, the leaders that are supposed to be to provide solution, are also the ones that are behind the insecurity themselves, I think that uh, it, it, uh, it, 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 we might just be lying to ourselves. But when we have leaders that are sincere, of course, sincerity in addressing this, the problem, and in providing infrastructures, in providing uh, equipment, I think to a very large extent, we might be having a better society in terms of security okay okay now now uh, bringing it out i just wanted to be like to be a revolving one uh, because we have the leaders and we have followers and um, the situation of nigeria today is like you know the milk has been spilled already mm. you know uh people are contented people are tired about uh, about the situation how would they approach this situation there is no other way other than forward moving forward, forward. Mm -hmm. we are all in this together it's not by mistake that we find ourselves as Nigerians. Okay. Even if it's by mistake, we are already Nigerians, we can't change it. So the point is that we need to think around the problem and believe that we can still have better society. If you give up on, the, on, your, on your nation, it can't, it can't help. So we need to be more patriotic, think positive in, you know, concerning the nation, and then believing that doing the right thing, everybody doing the right thing at his own level, then at the end, society will be better. Insecurity and the way forward. Okay, and um, a very laudable one, and I think all hands should be on deck uh, for us to get it right and um, for we to re refrain from, you know, loss of lives and properties all the time. And uh, also to solicit that the crime does not pay when you destroy what you've built, you know, with time, just in a twinkle of an eye. Then using it back again takes a whole lot energy and resources and uh, take um, crime um, 
we should we should we should leave crime and then embrace dialogue and all of that so that we can move forward. Thank you very much for seeing us and that the show has been views and thoughts on already 59 Star Times 113. Like I said initially, don't forget that you can also view us on YouTube. Just search Ugo Pluto Uba Emo World on YouTube and then you can have our previous uh, edition and likewise um, today's edition on on the platform. Thank you very much and let's do it again next time on the show.